Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to this week's episode of The Knife Guy. So what are we talking about today? Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. As the title suggests, I've got a little bit of good news to share with you guys. And I've got a little bad news to share with you guys. I don't want to alarm anybody. It says nothing to do with like the chance. Not like, you know, Metal Complex is doing something different with a channel. Right? No, not like that. I just have two stories to share with you guys. One of them is a positive story. And one of them currently is a negative story. Um, and uh, it's just kind of freaking me out a little bit. But um, I want to share it with you guys. Uh, and that that's going to be pretty much it today. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Um, I, uh, I have never lost anybody's stuff ever. You guys have heard the story about the time that the guy loaned me the, the Evo Typhoon and I accidentally dropped it into the couch and, you know, fortunately that worked out, but I have never lost anybody's stuff. I did one time lose, well, it was, I didn't lose it, but I shipped a prize package and UPS lost it. And the guy who won the prize package never got it. Of course, I compensated that gentleman. And if that gentleman is watching, you know, you can certainly, he can make himself known in the comments. But I said, let me put together a new prize package for you. And we just kind of did that, you know, off off the channel. And I said, I, I put a bunch of stuff in there. I think this is about the equivalent. It was uh, one of the live stream uh, prize packages where there were like multiple budget knives and like a coin and some other stuff. So I have such a big pile of stuff that I'm going to be giving away or that, I, you know, always there's always a pile of stuff I'm, I'm going to be giving away on live streams. I said, let me just throw together another package for you. So I did. And I sent it to him. And uh, it worked out. That's the only time anything has ever been lost by UPS. And let me tell you, you know, if you've ever wondered, you know, anybody who's ever, like, been um, skeptical about trading online or selling online, you're like, what if it gets lost? I ship about 10 things a week on this channel. Why? Well, because if you didn't know, the vast majority, well, anymore, not the vast majority, over half of the knives that I review on this channel are actually loaned to me by my viewers, which means they have to go back. Um, not a lot of people know that, <laughs> despite me having said it over and over again for five years. Um, yeah, it has to go back. So I have to ship stuff. Um, I have never lost anything. UPS has never lost anybody's stuff. All of the stuff that's been sent to me Right, not just from right here in the United States, but other countries, right? South Africa, Poland. It's always made it. Um, so uh I've never I've never lost anything. Um I've always you know, I've also, you know, when I when I say, hey, if you loan me something, please include a note. Please give me your name, you know, your email address, give me a way to contact you, tell me what knife you sent. It's easy for it's easier for me, right? I know people are like, oh, you should just remember. No, you, you have no idea, right? I got like f anywhere from 40 to 60 knives here at any one time. Keeping everything organized, it's not a matter of just having a good memory. That's a, that's a dumb, don't, yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> it's much easier to have people include notes. That way I can keep it all in line. This has worked. This has always worked. Every now and then I get a note from somebody who, you know, it's, it's, it's lacking some of the information, but it still has like an Instagram handle. I can be like, Hey, can you send me your shipping info? Can you send me your, you know, the stuff like, can we, can you confirm which knife you sent me? Right. That way I know it's always worked out. Uh, every now and then I get a knife with absolutely no note whatsoever. There are people who just totally ignore this and you know, it's fine. Like maybe it slips their mind. They, they pack it up and they ship it. And then I think, Oh wait, I didn't even send a note with that. Right. What I try to do is cut out the part of the package that shows their address just so I have that and kind of tuck it in there. But otherwise, I have no way of contacting them. Contacting them, And when that happens, I don't blindly ship this stuff off going, I hope this is the right address. I hope this person didn't move within the last couple of months, right? No, what I do is I hang on to it because eventually the person who sent it will think, gee, it's been a while you know, since uh, I sent my knife. A lot of times I can go back in my email and just search the name of the knife and it'll pop up with the email that was originally sent to me, right? But I get hundreds and hundreds of emails a week. I mean that. DMs and emails, I get hundreds of them. 
It's not always easy to find things. Sometimes people don't word things in a way where keyword searches work with my email, right? Uh, running a YouTube channel makes this a little bit more difficult when you're just one person, right? So if I cannot find the original conversation, I can't remember the person, the knife shows up with no note. I have no idea if the person wants me to give it away. If they want it, I have no idea, right? What I do is I hang on to it because eventually that person is going to go, hey, uh, where's my knife, right? That's, uh, that's the only thing I'm going to do. Um, but I'm certainly not going to do anything else with it I'm gonna, because it, it needs to go back, right? And this has always worked. It's been like maybe five or six times I've had a knife come in. And that's pretty good considering I have 3,000 uploads. Five or six times where people are like, hey, where's my knife, man? I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm glad you emailed me because I, I never got to know with your stuff, which again is no big deal. I'm not mad at anybody, right? It's not a big deal. But I've had a knife here for probably like eight months. It seems like literally eight or almost a year. And that's this knife right here. <laughs> oh, man. This little SOG, uh, what is this? SOG Tech XR in Cryo D2 has been sitting on my outbound shelf with just a pouch and no note. I could not find a conversation in Instagram. I could not find an email. I couldn't find anything. I have no idea. And I, I thought, surely somebody will message me and say, where is my SOG, right? Surely somebody will miss this. I mean, I know it's not a, a super expensive knife, but it's still, right? Like, like I mean, whoever sent it is obviously going to miss it. Nobody. Finally. This gentleman who was just, you know, this, the, the gentleman, and if you're watching this right now, I think the guy was just being nice. Like thinking, he was probably like, I know Metal Complex told me like eight weeks max, but maybe he's just, for some reason, it just took longer, right? He finally messaged. I was so happy because I had no idea what to do. I was literally considering making a video and saying, listen, I know what is going to become of this. Is, you know, this is going to make people try to claim this knife and it's not really going to be theirs, right? And I, But I was like, I need this to go back to the owner. So I was thinking, how do I create a video where I emphasize like, you know, you're not going to get this thing unless you can prove and show me the original conversation that we had. But I just was desperate in trying to find the owner of this knife. So I was all, I was literally a week away from making a dedicated channel upload talking about this knife and how I can't, I have no idea who sent it. I need to find the original owner. And the guy finally messaged me. I think it was eight, eight months later. Again, not coming down on the guy who sent it at all. It was very nice of him to send this to me and allow me to make a video on it. But I was so happy. And I messaged him and said, oh, thank God, man. <laughs> I'm so glad. So it's finally going to go back to his owner. This, that's all this was, right? A lot of people watch, that, that are new to Knife Guy are like, what is this, right? And they're, they're really bent out of shape that it's a long, drawn-out sort of ramble. Yeah, that's what this is. Hundred and Almost 200 episodes of this, right? It's been going on for a while. Not going to change. <laughs> that's just what it is. But I, I just wanted to share this with you guys. I'm so happy that the, uh, the person who sent this finally sent it back. So I can, you know, most... First and foremost, the most important thing is, is that this knife is not mine. It belongs to somebody else, and it's going back to its original owner, right? But second, my uh, track record is clean. It is, again, clean, right? With this knife in my possession, and it's not mine, and I don't know who the owner is, uh, in my mind, I'm like, that's not a clean track record because for all I know, this guy is doesn't he doesn't know my email address he doesn't know how to contact me and he assumes that I just took his knife right um so I'm very happy to be sending this back to the owner that's the good news that's the positive story right it's it's less good news bad news good news it's more here's one positive story here's a negative story on the flip side of that <laughs> I was talking about how I uh <laughs> had never um had never actually uh, had anything lost or stolen in the mail. Um, well, aside from that prize package, I've never had anything sent to me that was lost. I suppose there was. There have been times. The closest I've been is like like uh, OEMs will be like, "Hey, we're going to send you something," and then like a month goes by and it never gets here. And then I message them and they say, "Oh, it never even left our warehouse because the guys didn't." you know, get the right message or whatever. But nothing has actually been sent in the mail and then just lost, like gone nowhere. However, 
This is going to make everybody pucker. A lot of you guys know that I uh, am having a custom... I, I have a completed custom that was made by Bastion Knives. A lot of you know that it is a fixed blade. A lot of you have seen it because you are now following Bastion Knives. Or maybe you already were. And he showed the final product on his Instagram. If you want to go look... You can find it pretty easily. It's the fixed blade that's very recent on his Instagram. Uh, that was shipped to me, I think you shipped it out March 2nd. Or maybe maybe it was earlier than that. I can't remember. On March 4th, <laughs> it arrived at the, the Chicago Customs whatever, whatever, whatever. A day or so later, I got a notification that it, it had been released from customs, which God knows what that actually means. I don't know. Uh, it is now much, much later, and that is the last update that I have received, which doesn't mean that it's lost. I mean, truthfully, there's a good chance that I, I think I've read online, sometimes they just scan containers and it goes through and then they don't actually like sort through it. And they still have to take the time to sort through it. And Chicago gets really backed up, which is understandable because it's Chicago, right? So the package is not lost, but I have not received an update in a long time. And I'm starting to get kind of nervous. Uh, that, I think, I think it goes without saying, that was a really expensive knife. Um, it was also a knife that was 100% handmade. Even the Damascus that the blade is made out of uh, is sole authorship. He made the Damascus. This was a very involved knife. Uh, it is. It was meant to be something that was a real, you know, big celebratory acquisition. Um, I'm really excited about it. Really wanted to showcase Bastion Knives again on this channel. Um... And, you know, I've got faith. I did, I did call into uh, USPS. Who's, uh, it, was, it was EMS, and then it goes to USPS. And so I said, here's the tracking, and here's the last update. And they said, yeah. He said, I, you know, honestly, he said, you can file a claim. But I, he said, truthfully, I wouldn't worry just yet. He said, he confirmed my address with me. Really nice guy, honestly. Um, and uh, he said, the main thing to note here is that your address is correct. Um, so it doesn't look like there's any confusion on how to get it to you, right? It may be that they're just really backed up and it may just take a while, you know? That's the case sometimes. It depends on what customs area it goes to, right? Chicago is notoriously busy and usually gets backed up. I've read some horror stories online that say people have had their stuff sit there for a month, right? And that's, yeah, it's a bummer. If you're going to be uh, somebody who collects knives, especially you get into this territory, right? Stuff like this. Sometimes you're going to be ordering things and waiting for a long time. I'm no stranger to waiting. Uh, I definitely do, um, you know, put in orders for things and I, I wait for, you know, uh, there was close to a year in some cases, over a year uh, for some knives. Pre-orders, right? It's another thing entirely to have a knife shipped and then it's sitting somewhere, going through God knows whose hands, right? I have faith in the United States Postal Service, um, but I know that there are situations where people just decide, you know what, I'm going to see what's in this box and then keep it. Um, and it is my absolute nightmare that somebody decides to open the package that contains my custom knife and goes, yeah, because, I mean, honestly... Whoever decides, if, if that ends up being the case, anybody who decides to open that package up, there is a 0% chance that they pull that knife out of there and go, nah, you know what, I'm going to pack this back up and make sure it gets to the owner. Now, anybody who decides to do that, anybody who's slimy enough to open up a pack, I mean, seriously, like, if you have ever worked at a any type of mail distribution, this or that, if you have ever opened up somebody else's package and just kept it, Oh man, I uh, I guess you must have really needed. Honestly, I I I honestly feel sorry for people like that. That's really uh, I, that's that's really sad that you've arrived at that point in your life, you know. And I know those people don't care, but 
I, I, all I can feel is pity for those people because truthfully, they're never going to make it anywhere, right? If you find yourself stealing things out of packages, you're not going anywhere. You're destined to just kind of fizzle out, right? Um, that sounds really mean and really dark, but that's, that's the truth, right? Um, that's where my mind is right now is just being afraid that somebody's going to decide they want to keep it. Um, and there's no way to get that exact knife back, right? So, uh, it, it, I am a little nervous, but I've got my fingers crossed and I'm hoping that it arrives safely within the next week or so. If it does not, I have been instructed to file a claim after another week. Um, and I don't know, you know, anybody who works in USPS or anybody who has insight, I've never actually dealt with this exactly where something is like cleared from customs and then just doesn't come and there's no update. So if you have insight on this, if you've worked USPS, maybe you actually have experience in Chicago. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. <laughs> I'm pretty nervous right now. Uh, trying to keep my faith. So that's it. Not the worst thing in the world, not yet. Obviously, it'll be a much worse story if it ends up if it ends up actually getting lost. But um, it's pretty concerning. Um, at this point, when I buy stuff, it is absolutely an investment, right? And I know a lot of people roll their eyes at that. Hey, listen, you can think whatever you want, but I run a knife channel, right? I'm not only buying things for my collection, I'm also investing and in putting money, and this is a business expense at this point. I'm buying things that I turn back into content, right? And no matter how you look at this, the truth is, is that at this point, this channel is run like a business. It has to be, right? That's how, when I do my taxes, that is how I'm required to do my taxes. I don't have a choice, right? I have to because the channel generates money in the night. The smart thing to do is to take, you know, a lot of the revenue that's generated by this channel and turn it back into more content, right? That's how we keep it going. So whatever your feelings are about that, just understand that's how it has to work. It's not like I have a choice, right? Um, because you're, you're, you know, if I'm making content and it's, it's monetized, then it's, it's generating income. So that's how you have to do it. This, uh, what I'm saying, I, I could obviously keep all of the revenue if I wanted to, but I turn, a, I use a lot of it and turn it back into content. In this case, this knife was purchased as is the case with a lot of other knives in this channel, it was purchased with funds that were generated by ad revenue and other sources on this channel, right? So that would be a big kick in the groin, you know, uh, you know, that would be a big loss. Um, but most importantly, I'm not necessarily concerned with the additional revenue that would be generated from a video, because the truth is, is that it might generate another twenty to thirty thousand views, which is cool. But that video alone, if you didn't know, right, it's uh, it's it's not really that much money. It's not like you know the knife, which by the way cost about eighteen hundred dollars, right? I'm not gonna make eighteen hundred dollars on a video. Um, that's just not that's not how that twenty to thirty thousand views is not gonna make me eighteen hundred dollars, right? This is more so the enthusiast in me and wanting to share these types of things with uh, the people who watch my content. So I'm not not really concerned about the additional revenue that would be generated by the video. I'm concerned about the knife and um, all the time that um, Ollie put into it, right? Neither of us want to see it gone. So <laughs> it's kind of a little bit scary, but uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it for today. I just wanted to share that with you. I know, weird, different episode of The Knife Guy, but for those of you who enjoy this type of stuff, this is a an update, a window into the Metal Complex YouTube channel or what's happening right now. So anyways, cross your fingers with me. I'm hoping it comes in within the next week. Thanks so much for watching or listening. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.